Hi guys, uh, welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to talk about this old book. Well, I'm not going to really talk about the book so much as uh, the subject. The subject being Byron, George Gordon Byron. Now, this book, the reason I'm not going to talk too much about this book per se is that it doesn't matter um, sometimes the book so much as the subject. And the thing is, I don't think you're going to find this book this book is over a hundred years old. Um, it was published back in um, 1880. So that's pretty amazing. Almost 150 years old. Um, so it's not the, the, the book so much. Um, it is a good book. Um, it's a good, it's, it's neat because um, there is, uh, this book is closer to Byron than we are to this book, for instance. Um, this book was written only, what, 50 years after Byron's death? And we're 150 years after this book, almost. Uh, anyway, so, so it's not the book so much as the subject matter. Although I did find the perspective of someone in the late 19th century looking at Byron to be very interesting. So, um, you know, if you get the chance to read different subjects uh, from different perspectives, it's, uh, it can be very interesting. So um, I'm really glad I read this book. I found it really interesting. Um, one thing I liked about it is that too often, too often these days, or the, yeah, I guess these days, my whole life really, um, books and um, books and different subjects are, are treated like um, sensationalistically. And I find that kind of annoying, like, um, like, movies, books, uh, experts or specialists, they always up, play up the controversialness of their subject matter to make it like more, to make it sexier or, or something more appealing. But I find the truth, uh, you know, told as accurately as possible. I find that to be the most interesting. Don't exaggerate anything. I don't need um, someone to exaggerate Byron's womanizing or something and he you know he was a bit of a womanizer but not tons <laughs> or Shelley's atheism or Keats atheism or um, you know whatever the subject is at hand like um, how wild and crazy whoever Einstein was or um, some someone someone's hero you know everybody's hero has to be just this crazy whatever exaggeration and I, I don't like that um, as, as a scholar, as an academic, I, I just, just tell me the, just tell me the details, right? Tell me the facts, uh, as, as, as well as you can. I understand that everything has a perspective and, and so on. And I, I like those perspectives, but just, you know, um, tell, give me the person. Don't give me the person packaged up for, uh, some kind of modern cretin who can't, you know, think of anything outside of his own narrow framework. So anyway, um, what do we learn about Byron? Um, I guess I really enjoyed the book because I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a neophyte Byron fan. Um, I I really enjoy reading the whatever first chunk of uh, uh, Child Her Herald. Um, I really enjoyed the couple of books of. Don Juan that I've read, chapters or books, whatever you want to call it, and I've enjoyed his his smaller poems. Um, and uh, this, I found this book good because, um, of course, it's the author's perspective. But he he talked a little bit about uh, some of the plays that Byron wrote. And you know, if you're a fan of this channel, you know I don't like plays very much. Um, but it's nice to know what what an author wrote and his plays weren't very successful but that doesn't mean that they're not of interest in some regard and uh it told me a little bit about some other uh of byron's writings that i didn't know about some of the uh autobiographical material like his letters and stuff like that um some writings that people who knew him wrote about him and a little bit about his his perspective on the poets at the time like he was notoriously um you know 
he <laughs> the, the ruling the ruling poet of the time i guess when he entered onto the scene was was wordsworth of course and then byron of course i guess in a way took the mantle from him in terms of fame or whatever and uh byron very was you know byron liked for instance uh, shelley but he was sort of tough on the other poets like he was tough on coleridge and he's tough on keats um and other poets that aren't, aren't as well known but it, i mean so that you know foibles of his personality and i liked um, learning about his travels um, why he went to greece and fought in their kind of war of independence and the significance that his his being there had so I guess in a way, like you don't have to read this book and you probably won't be able to find it anyway by, by John Morley or sorry, by John Nickel. Um, you probably won't be able to find it anyway. So just, you know, find, uh, find a, a book on Byron or whatever, if that's what you're interested in. And I think that the old rule of thumb is if you want to really know a person, read at least two biographies of them because they can be very different. They can be very different. Like I read a biography of Keats, for instance. Um, I didn't like it very much. Um, I think the author doesn't, doesn't see Keats the way I see him, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm glad that I read that um, biography, but I'm certainly not, I'm certainly going to read more and uh, especially his letters and so on. But in terms of Byron, um, I think it's good that you can read up on on authors i mean you don't need to know about them to appreciate their poetry but it does help and it does give you dimensions that uh, um, th dimensions that maybe you didn't see or, or whatever before that so um what can i say in some total uh, about byron uh, he was basically born he was born of a noble family aristocratic family or whatever but he he wasn't of the why i say this the senior branch of the family but by a few accidents of of inheritance he became inheritor of the uh of the uh the lordship of the gordon uh the byron family um i think his mother's family is the gordons right anyway um and sort of by accident he he basically goes from rags to riches and uh like a noble like uh, a peer that they call the, the a peer so like a basically a high-ranking uh noble nobleman in england meant that he for instance uh was a member of the house of lords for instance uh, he wasn't totally uh, very active in politics other than his Greece adventures, right? Um, and so he he is he comes to us as a poet, right? Um, incredibly famous in his lifetime. And one of the things, um, I always say that the greatness of literature or art or, or, or whatever stands in inverse relation <laughs> to one's popularity. Of course, that's not always true because Tolstoy was incredibly popular during his lifetime and uh and Byron's a great poet and Goethe was was very famous uh in his lifetime so Janitsyn once he got you know he was very much celebrated um you know once he got known in the 1970s and so on in, in the west so it's not always the case but and that was one of the things that Byron had to had to figure out for himself it's like yeah i'm famous well what does that mean is that a good thing or not is that a sign that i'm a, a, a poet for for the commoners that you know basically a writer of limericks or something or does that mean you know and in a way it doesn't mean anything or it can mean something or it indeed need not mean anything at all um i i, I always say that in our time um i think I think um, Jordan Peterson's fame is well deserved. I think he's f a genius and a great, a great man and a great intellect. And he has the fame he deserves, 
but his fame isn't a mark of appreciation of his genius, if that makes any sense at all. Because I think the people that like him don't really understand how great he is, right, in that sense. It's just an example. So, um, you know, some people are appreciated in their lifetimes, some people aren't. Um, like, I always give the example of David Hume, which leads me on to my next uh, review, which I'll give, in, I'll make in a, in a minute, as soon as this is done. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Bertram Russell's book. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. So, just read something on Byron. Um, it's it's a good, this this little book. It was whatever two hundred pages. It, it was a decent entryway into his life. Uh, it was it was not as um, informative in some ways because it's short. But that's a like I've read excellent biographies that that are shorter. Um, I can think of uh, biography of Mary Shelley, biography of uh, Herman Melville, um, Proust different things. So if you just want to get your feet wet on a subject, just find a short biography, 100 pages, 150, 200. And if you really, if someone becomes really important to you, then read the big ones. Read the, the uh, Frank, what's his name? Frank, uh, the guy who wrote the massive biography of Dostoevsky. Anyway, uh, or big biographies of Dickens or whatever. So anyway, I'm blabbering on right now. Um, I think that reading a, a biography of a poet or of a writer, I think it helps to increase your appreciation of their writings and helps you to look for things, clues of their personality, reflections of their personality, and so on. But anyway, that's all I got for for that on Byron. I'm sure. If, I'm sorry if this seemed a little bit uh, um, disorganized. Anyway, I wanted to do a video tonight because I have a little bit of energy and, and so on and I've just been so unproductive in the video world. Anyway, take care guys and I'll see you in a minute when I talk about Bertrand Russell. Take care now.